Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. For this week's tutorial, I bring you a quick CSS trick that you can apply if you're working with portfolio pages in Squarespace 7.1 and you need the images to not get cropped. If you've tried to tackle this before through the settings of the section, you've probably noticed that there's not really an auto aspect ratio option, but we can definitely achieve that by using just a little bit of CSS. Now, keep in mind that this customization is going to work for both the grid simple layout and the grid overlay layout. However, the code is going to vary just a little bit for each situation. So without further ado, if you're ready to learn how you can make this happen for your current client project, make sure to keep on watching. Alrighty, so here I am in my portfolio page inside Squarespace 7.1. And as you can see, I have a couple of logos in place that I want to display on this page. Now, three of those logos look pretty well because here we have them set as square and then I have also selected the aspect ratio for the portfolio items as square. So as you can see, these three look pretty good. However, these other three, they're sort of like longer logos. And as you can see, they just get completely caught off inside the section. Now, if we were to go in here and then click on edit to be able to change the aspect ratio of these items, you're going to see that really regardless of the one that I pick, there's just some logos that are not going to look right. Like here, you can see how this one looks pretty good, but now all of the other ones get completely cut off. The problem here is that there's not really an auto aspect ratio the way that we have it on other blocks and other sections inside Squarespace. So basically, we're going to have to make that happen via CSS. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to go ahead and show you what is actually causing the images to get cropped. So let's go ahead and take a look here inside the inspect element tool. And then just looking through a couple of the containers that we have in here, starting from the bigger one, we have the whole section for this portfolio page. And then here we have the regular section border container and content wrapper as for any other section in 7.1. If we open up the content wrapper one, we have a couple of containers, including one that is creating the grid for the portfolio. And then here we have all of these items that are called grid item. So each of these represent one of sort of like the slides that we have inside the portfolio page. If we open these up, we can see that there are two containers. So we have the grid image and the portfolio text, and these may be a little bit different with the overlay layout, but for the grid one, this is what it looks like. And then inside the grid image, we have another container. And then here, finally, we have the actual image element. Now, within this image element itself is where the actual problem or issue is coming from. So if we take a look here on the right side, you're going to see that at the top, we have width of 100%, a height of 100%, an object position of 50-50, which is just making sure that the focus dot is pretty much in the center of the image. And then we have this property called object fit set to cover. Now, this little value here is the thing that is making this image get cropped because the problem is that object fit cover is going to expand the image, whether it's a logo or anything else, is going to cover the entirety of the container that is directly holding this image, which in this case, it would be this one, which right now is set to square because of this one that is actually set in the aspect ratio. But that part doesn't really matter. The important part is that the cover keyword is the one that is creating this crop. So if we were to change this cover word for a different one, like contain, for example, what we're going to do is we're going to shrink down the image so that it takes up as much space available inside that container as possible without going over its limits, which is what's happening right now. So I'm going to go ahead and target this image element inside my portfolio pages. And then I'm going to change that object fit value to something else. So I'm going to target this by selecting the image element in here because I think, yeah, this doesn't have any classes. So I'm just going to select the image element in here inside grid images, but I don't want to keep my selector this simple, let's say, because this is not really referring to portfolio pages. We don't really see the portfolio keyword inside these classes. So let's go ahead and select something else that is going to make sure that we're targeting portfolio pages so that nothing else gets modified on the page. So if we take a look a little bit higher up into a couple of different containers, we can see that this one has a class of portfolio grid basic. And then we have grid wrapper, collection, content wrapper, and then just a couple of other things. Now, this one that says portfolio grid basic can work for us because this definitely points to portfolio pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine a couple of these selectors to be able to create my final selector list. So I'm going to start with my target container, which is going to be the image element. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and just select here grid image. So grid image. I could actually skip this one, but I'm just going to include it there anyway. And then here I'm going to select portfolio grid basic like so. And now I can go ahead and change that value from before. So object fit, instead of using here cover, I'm going to be using the keyword contain. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that because we're trying to change a property or the value of a property that is an inline style, which basically means that the style has been applied to the HTML of the element itself, you can see it in here. And that's why it shows up up here. We basically need to use the important rule to be able to override this. So I'm just going to include that in here. And just like that, you can see how now the images have resized. And even though they're trying to cover the entirety of that square that is holding them, they're not really going over the limits of that square. And therefore, they're no longer getting cropped. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what this shows up as here on mobile. So here you can see how all of the images stop getting cropped. So unless I sort of hover over them and they get this sort of hover effect, they don't really get cropped. So that's awesome. The other thing that we can modify here is now the aspect ratio, basically to reduce a little bit of the white space that these logos have around. So let's go ahead and change this to something else. I think I'm going to set it to 69 white screen. And this is just going to shrink the images down as well. Because again, and now since the images are meant to sort of be contained, well, just as the keyword says, they're meant to be contained within the boundaries of the container that's holding them, the parent container that's holding them. If you reduce the height and the width of that container, the image is also going to resize. However, in this case, this actually works for me because now you can see that we don't have that big um, sort of gap or white space that we had around the logos anymore because the container is a little bit sort of shorter vertical wise. So now if I save this and then take a look up mobile, you're going to see that the difference or like the separation in between the logo and the title that we have down here is much smaller than we had it before. And everything looks a little bit neater now with the different aspect ratio. Now let's go ahead and check out what this looks like with the overlay grid. So the thing with the grid overlay now is that the classes that we used for the previous selector for the one that we used for the grid simple are different than the ones that we need to use for the grid overlay. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can modify that in our CSS to be able to make sure that the code works for this layout as well. So if we take a look in here, we're going to see the same thing as before. So we're going to see a couple of containers here. You can see that we have three containers instead of two compared to what we saw in the previous layout. But then here inside the grid image, we pretty much have the same structure. So we have the image in here. We also have this set as object fit cover by Squarespace. And then here we have the same class from before. So we have the image element in the grid image, the same way that we have it inside our CSS selector. However, if we now go up to that container where we grab this class of portfolio grid basic, we're going to see that this class is a little bit different for the overlay layout. So if we were to change just that last keyword here, instead of using basic, we use overlay. You're going to see how now the code applies to the overlay layout. Now, the other thing that we can modify in here is once again, the aspect ratio for these images, because you're going to see that if I go onto mobile, there's a lot of space at the top and at the bottom of these images. So let's go ahead and change that real quick. And then here, I'm just going to go ahead and select maybe even ultra white screen in the situation. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to save that. And if I go into mobile, we're going to see how now the space in between the logos is much narrower than it was before. All right, my friend, and that's everything that I have for you today. I really hope that you found this trick helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on content just like today's, and I will see you next time.